Okay, sorry about that. I had to clean the mess of my dog. Okay, let us continue. Take my narcissism, the apothecary says, indicating an arcade instrument attached to his arm that is mercifully free from the bulkhead with a downward glance. At order's behest, you release the maglocks, securing the narcissism in, in place and attach it in, into your own arm. There are unquits and med medicandum equivalents of five medikits worth. Each time you use a medikit, you restore your wounds to its starting total. As you do this, orders intones the apothecary's creed between agonized hats. It is the sacred oath sworn by all those who submit themselves for training at the apothecarium. He that may fight, kill him. He that may fight no more, kill him peace. With that, he is dead. Take him, take him the chapter's due. While his gene seed returns to chapter, Space Marine cannot die. He breaks off choking on his own blood as his body shuts down. Without death, pain loses its relevance. 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 Orders then proceeds to tell you the clandestine code that activates the reductor built into the narcissism so that you might remove his own progenal glands that he might yet serve the chapter still. Brot <clears throat> Brother Apothecary Orders has passed his sacred duty on you that you might you might tend to the injured and recover gene seed of the dead as you continue your search for the rest of the squad Scipio. Now, brother, he says with his dying breath, do what must be done. With, with that, his chin dropped onto his chest and he says nothing more. Enter the clandestine code. Entering the code, you successfully activate the reductor. Without a moment hesitation, you plunge its weary pearl bit into the Ordus's neck. Feeling the clamped teeth bite down onto the tough organ, you pull it free. Fortunately, you're also able to remove the second progenoid located within the apothecary's chest. You gain two purity. Secure both glands in one one of the sanctified stasis chamber inside the narthesium. There is nothing more. You, there is nothing more you can do for further orders and so are forced to leave his body locked within the very fabric of the bulkhead. However, you are able to retrieve three clips of bolter rounds that are in the apothecary's position. Each clip has 20 shots. However, as you progress further through the bulk cargo hauler, following the only viable path open to you, your helm aspects begins to bleep and cheer up with activity. Overlaying the information, it is picking up your helmet's hood. Cute wireframe 3D scan of the hulk appears first. On the top of this, then appear the target markers indicating your battle brother's life signs. <coughs> A feeling of relief washes through you as you see that the rest of the boarding parties party are still alive. Although they are, they appear to have somehow been scattered throughout the hulk, all except for one. Your aspect has failed to pick up such a hilarious note. Based on your primary scan downloaded into your aspect whilst you were on, still on board of Seal of Dawn, and from the information, information your aspect has picked up since, including the locator signals relayed from your Battle Brothers suit. You know, you now know, you know which direction you need to travel. Travel, travel into the track, each other down. However, you have no idea what sort of environment you will find there, or what secrets those areas of herald of oblivion are hiding. So, which? of your fellow Imperial Fist do you want to track down first? Hmm. 
I would say let's <clears throat> let's go for the librarian, epistolary ladders. With the signal from the librarian suit as your target, you set off the you set off deeper into the derelict, echoing empty chambers the size of ecclesiarchy templements give away the claustrophobic virus of Galaxian nest fears, which in turn give away to the passage that appears to have been hewned from the rock of captured asteroids. Continue, continuing to follow the signal, you eventually find yourself in a large chamber that tapers to the point before a fissure that rises 30 meters through the rock wall in front of you. Whatever else lies beyond the fissure, it is it is within that you will find brother librarian librarian Radams, or whatever it is remains of him. You ease your tactical dreadnought armor through the rift and enter the strangely miasmic gloom beyond. The rock walls themselves ap appear to ooze with slime. Slowly you realize that, subs that the substance of the tunnel isn't rock at all. What you took to be a rocky exterior of trapped asteroid was, in truth, a void-hearted exterior shell of some unimaginable, unimaginably huge tyran tyrannic bioship. Picking, making my way through the bioship, you have eventually emerged. From the wound inside an arterial red passageway, the walls which ripple with pulse of some unbelievably slow heartbeat. My purity score is less than 13. My purity score is equal or greater than 13. Brother, the psi flash suddenly has, has you on your knees on the soft, yielding floor of meat wall and passageway. Brother Neighbor. The tall words come again inside your head. Is that you, brother? Librarian, you gasp out loud. Aye, it is I. Now listen, I don't have much time, Radamus projects. Such is the force of his telepathic communication that it sends waves of nausea rightly through you. I have the Hive Tyrant's psychic spore now. Together we can defeat the horror. I know we can. Join me, brother. But do not antagonize the slave beasts of the ship unnecessarily and beware the river tentacles. And then Radamus is gone again from your mind and the sick feeling in your stomach passes. Bearing the librarian's warning in your mind, you set up again through the tyrannous superorganism. Push on. As you make your way through the poetic gloom and blood red darkness of the bioship interior, you wonder how it came to be part of the Herald of, Oblivi Herald of Oblivion. Tyrannid hive fleets do not travel through the warp like the ships of Imperium or other various alien races. Having mastered the instinctive manipulation of gravity fields of the star system to achieve super, super luminal speeds instead. However, considering that the end of the virus inside, it would have been seen fair to assume that this particular vessel suffered catastrophic damage at some point in the past, causing it to enter a state of dormancy or hibernation. If after this it had encountered the Hulk, which by killing the sheer of its sheer size would have pulled it, pulled it in with its own gravity field, it is highly possible that the two space-born entities became, became a combined as the Hulk continued to draw all manner of space debris to itself. But one thought worries you, with both yourself and the potent psyker brother librarian Radamus stalking the hives in poetic depths, how long it will be, how long will it be before the space-bearing superorganism starts to wake up again? Unsettling, the unsettling passageway twists and turns with the intestinal frequency until it branches into two distinct paths. All you know that, all you know, is that Epistolary Radamus is somewhere ahead. But which, bra which branch of the passageway will you take? 
turn, go left, take the right branch. There's nothing indicating anything. Uh, let's take left. The corpse gray skilia ripple and twitch at your passing while your ceramite boots have content with the thick excretion of plechmi matter on the coating of the floor of the passageway you are now following. There is no sign, however, of any tyrannoforms you would accept to be lurking within the biosheck of the Turanian beats. Perhaps the thing is really dead after all, and all its spawns with it. In the time you reach another natural junction, a drog is being drog is being drawn towards the rubbery pipe to your left. For some reason, while the fleshy tunnel to the right disappears off into crimson gloom. Okay. A drog towards the rubbery pipe to your left. Hmm. Let's go left. The further you progress under the tunnel, the stronger the priests become. Entering the uneven space laced with air pockets kept by a parts by a strand of sinuous tissue, you see two passageways leading onwards. There seems little to tell them apart except that one of one to the left appears to be twice the diameter of the one to the right. Let's go to the right hand. The tunnel leads you to the great gallery deep within the hive shield. What do you see there has you <coughs> what do you see there has you training your weapons on the walls, checking your horseback on your heart for any sign of movement. You recognize the creature for what it is immediately. For there can no can be no mistake for the terrible form of a carnifrax. One of the deadliest of all high fleets assault creatures, Carnifrex is a living battering ram, powerful enough to take on a Vindicator tank and win. And yet this particular specimen isn't about to kill you, instead it appears to be sleeping. It is cocooned within a huge serum-filled blister in the wall of this shield chamber, its massive skiting talons and crushing claws folded across its massive thorax or at its sides, its chitinous hide is scarred by what might well have been last blasts, and half its head is bare to bone, thanks to some injury sustained in the past. You wonder how long the Carnifrex has been here like this, recuperating from its last battle injuries in the cold as the hives went into the hibernation, and how long is it likely to remain so? For all you know, there may be a pheromone sensors or trigger here that will awaken the cardiac if you try to proceed any further. So, how do you want to proceed? Open fire on the cardiac while it's still unaware of my presence. Proceed on my way through the gallery. Ah, um. Let's see if there is a save button somewhere here. Uh, here. Your position has been saved. To reload this position, just tap the data file button on the upper right. Upper right. And it's probably this one. Okay. So as we are space marine, and well, probably this is a foolish idea, let's open fire on the cardbreaks. Opening fire on the dormant Carnifrex, you managed to make its injury significantly worse. However, you also managed to rouse it from its slumber. Giving a voice of horrendous shrieking scream, the monster tears its way free of its cocoon and comes you like a living engine of destruction. Fight. Well, it's, it is seriously wounded. It only has six wounds left. Okay, 
We have 100% until 6 wounds, so the Carnifrex will die immediately. It was seriously damaged. <laughs> the fight is over. Victory! The Carnifrex dead, its vital fluids running and rivulets across the bone in matter of at your feet, and you are able to continue on your way through the gallery without further obstacles getting in your way. Proceed onwards. You pass the bony hospital gallery to another fleshy tube that glows with an internal bioluminescence and start to wonder just how far inside the hives you have been penetrated. Oh, penetration. And where the epistolary realm must be exactly. From the glowing OS, how can little should attract you pass into the body cap cavity permit? Permeated by the miasmic gloom, the gloom is suddenly pierced by the spear of flame, and you lay eyes on the pile war waiting you, waiting, waiting for you there for the first time. It is a lumping creature, bereft of the sleek lines of heavy sitting armors of the tyrannic species. In fact, it looks like little more than a series of digestive sacs on the legs. Its belly and throat sacs are distended and seed with volatile gastric juice contained within. As you watch the pyrover turns your way, its body hunts over, it anchors itself with, with its heavily clawed feet under the soft floor of the gut chamber. Its it body starts to convulse as it prepares to launch an incandescent ball of incendiary stomach acid from the cannon-like creature latched on its back. The projectile vomit flames of the weapon Sambayot are powerful enough to reduce armor as well as flesh and bone to nothing more than a gooey smoldering mucus. So you need to think carefully before rushing to engage this beast in battle. <clears throat> okay. Since it is a ranged creature, being far from it will probably lead me in getting myself blurred into a slime. But getting into close combat could also be dangerous since it has time to fire at least once. So our options are, I will engage the Pyro War in combat from afar. I will charge in and tackle the Tyranid in close combat. That would be probably the best idea. Or not. With a battle cry under your lips, you charge across the chamber to meet the Pyro War in battle. As you do so, with a booming roar of its own that drones, drowns your battle cry, the flame squirt weapon symbiote on its back discharges a stream of scalding stomach acid at you, which ignites on coming on the contact with the air. You lose three wounds. I am still alive. The pyro war is just as dangerous as the living cannon attached to its back. Driven by nothing more than the need to feed, the creature prepares to meet you, meet your faltering attack with its claws and fanged maw that continuously drips with a close and pile of powerful enough to melt the ceramide and dissolve steel. Fire. The enemy has a first strike. Defend yourself. Miss. Okay. We are safe. We are close enough to use our relay blade. 69% uh, chance of hitting. And we miss. Okay, let's focus. He has only 8% chance. Okay, good. And we deal 6 wounds. And he misses. Good. And... We took no damage. The fight is over. Victory. At your killing blow, the pyro will distend the blabbers and blow the gastric sacs rupture. Wheels of bait. Skull, skull, uh, actually skull, fist, and uh, fist. 
fate determined. Boom! Your death blow exposes the volatile contents of the, mo of the monster gastric chambers. They combust on coming into contact with air, blowing the pyroware apart in explosion pile and crystal drenches you in this noxious geyser of corrosive icor. You lose five wounds. Ah, oh, man. I am still alive. As the smoking vapor rising from what is left of pyroware slowly dissipates, you notice for the first time that the walls of the passageway have purple-gray visceral hue. They begin to ripple and convulse with a per peristaltic motion. The sound of rushing water echoes from what can be much further from along the tunnel while your suit detects an increased humidity within the area. And then with a great peristaltic heave, a passageway suddenly contracts and you find yourself being forced down constricting tube as if you were being swallowed. Something like Brother Chaos Lightning Class would have been become very useful right now. Sadly you are without without this particular piece of work here. Praise myself for a ride. There is nothing you can do as the fire ship pulls you deeper into itself. Wheels of pain. Now, fist and fist. You hang on. You are ground down the pipe, disgorged into a large chamber filled with what look like irregular paste bubbling tar pits. Some, uh, however, you know that they are in fact a biosip rendering pits, that no knowledge is all you need to find strength to throw out the hand and hang on to the outlet pipe, stopping yourself being broken down in the biomass yourself. Ooh, that would have been uh, horrific fate. Swinging yourself down in more control, controlled fashion, you land on a grisly bat platform, car cartilaginous matter between the pitch bubbling, bubbling primordial slurry. Check out my surroundings. Suddenly, your aspect chimes, having picked up a brother radar signal again on the far side of the rendering chamber. You pause for a moment as you focus your thoughts. Perhaps, if you concentrate hard enough, he might be able to spy your consci consciousness through a foetid maze of the hive mind with his tiger sight. And how and and know that you are on your way. Only the Radamus signal isn't alone for long. Soon the built-in proximity alarm begins to sound and multiple returns paint the scope with, with glowing green runes. Since entering the tyranid hives, how many of the, the following organisms have you encountered? Uh, two or three organisms. Their intrusion in the hive ship has not gone unnoticed. As you make your way across the chamber, following Brother Radamus' signal, a, a brood of agile, six-limbed creatures dart towards you between the rendering pits. Each of the alien clutches a weapon organism and open fire while they are still some way away. Fight. Defend yourself. The enemy has the first strike. Termagants. Four of them. Okay, better get in the close proximity. And let's focus so they have zero chance of hitting me. Okay. Much better. And once more. Zero percent for them. Let's see if they have any armor. Yes, they have. And focus to reduce their hit chance to eight percent. One damage.
And that clans is Two clans. Oh, can't tell it. One damage. One, two damage. Miss. And a crit. Miss. Clans. And a clans. Focus for a 100% chance and a critical hit. One damage. We have taken three damage in this fight. And another crit. Four damage in this fight. And next fight, we can deal 12 wounds immediately. The fight is over. Victory. Even though you have dealt with the Bioship first wave of defense organism, you suspect that more will be on their way soon. Quickening your step to read the far side of the rib wall, the body cavity, and pass through the cartilaginous archway on the other side, and that when it hits you, like a, it's like a wave of palpable panic-inducing terror gnaws at your mind and your sanity with sheer overwhelming horror of it all. After all, you are in a creeping through the guts of some vast space-bearing organism that is only a minuscule part of the unimaginably vast intergalactic entity possessed by an appetite so insatiable even the millions of star systems contained within the galaxy are not enough to satisfy its ravenous hunger. My purity score is less than 7. My purity score is equal or greater than 7. Some malign entity nearby is projecting an aura of dread that gnaws at the edge of your sanity. Scratches, scratching as the black, at the, at the, scratching as the back of your mind, bringing your darkest fears and phobias to the surface. For whatever the Codex and Stardust base might say, there are things that even Space Marine fears, such as in your case. Not being able to complete your mission or failing to fulfill your duty to your fellow Imperial Fists. However, as a battle brother of the Imperial as the battle brother of the first company, you know how to use those anxieties, how to turn them back upon themselves, letting them feel your righteous anger and retributive fury so that you might better punish the enemies of mankind. The Emperor protects! Your declaration echoes from the bony walls to the rendering wall. And hearing your words echoing back to you, you you, you feel your faith revitalize you. You shall not fail your Primarch or him enthroned upon Earth, no matter what obstacle the high mind might set before you. You gain one purity. Proceed onwards. Beyond the bony archway, you find yourself in much smaller space. The walls of these organ chambers are made of pulsing black flesh etched with spiders web of what look like look like a pulsating blood vessels. But the appearance of the chamber itself is not what grabs your attention as you enter. The monster must have been at least six meters tall and bony protrusions on its back reaching even higher than that. It stands on two enormous armored trunk-like legs that end in both hooves and claws. Every part of this Xenoform's body has been genetic genetically engineer engineered with the only one end in mind, to maim and kill the high fleet's prey. The blades of obsidian purple chilling covers that cover over the ivory flesh beneath it beneath are studded with a razor sharp barbs. In one of his four talon hands it holds bone swords that crackle with neural energy, and in another it clutches the body of brother librarian Radamus. Epistolary! You cannot help yourself. The shock of seeing librarian like this snared 
in the claws of the monster is too much for you. The hive tyrant turns in needling stare on you. Turn its needling stare on you, and in the same moment you feel its alien consciousness probe your mind's defenses, like a talent scraping the inside of your skull. This is sinister, self-aware, self-aware intelligence at work behind those glassy, sharp, black eyes. Brother neighbor, the librarian cast. Stay back. The unconsciously you tighten your grip on your weapon in your hand. Radamus, Radamus's own war gear, his force hammer and a storm field, storm shield, lies not far. Lies not far from your amidst the wise's bluff like slime covering the spongy floor. But epistolary you begin. Taking a step towards over towards the monstrous tyranny and its captive. The beast is too powerful, Mr. Ramos cast, clearly in a great deal of pain. It is only then as the hive tyrant draws back the limp glancing at the librarian that you see how the horror has breached the librarian's armor already has its claws inside his body. But I believe today is a good day for me to die. The Hive Tyrant turns his gaze on its prisoner, hissing savagely. You can feel the malign influence of the synapse screech of psychic powers, so you hate to think what they must be doing to one whose mind is attuned to such otherworldly sensations. It must be pure torture. You cannot simply stand by and watch as Radamus is forced to endure its suffering. But what can you do? A Hive Tyrant is a powerful beast indeed, easily capable of wiping out a regiment of Imperial Guardsmen by itself. Grand Epistolary Radamus Emperor's peace and put him out of his misery. Mm. I don't think that's a good idea. Attempt to recover a pistol is war gear in order to use the force hammer and storm shield. Attack the hive tyrant using your own war gear. <laughs> I think I'm going to attack him and save, probably save, the librarian. Dismissing the idea of recovering the librarian's war gear until the battle is done, you unleash the emperor's righteous fury of the hive tyrant with everything you have in your personal arsenal. Use my storm folder. Even as the Terminator Space Marine, even an Imperial Fist is going to struggle with the best one of the High Fleet's commanders in a single combat. Only you are not alone. By distracting the monster from the captive in its claws, you give Brother Librarian the time he needs to master his prodigious, prodigious psychic powers one last time, focusing them in a last ditch assault on the synapse, synapse creature. With the scream of Hercatus, Radamus unleashes an almighty blast of warp energy. It exploded with such force, for just for a moment, it looks like it looks to you like the like the librarian has rent the veil between the physical realm and the warp asunder, unleashing a devastating force that utterly consumed the shrieking tyrant. Your psychic shock, the psychic shockwave picks you up and hurls you against the wall of the chamber, causing you to black out. You lose two wounds. I am still alive. When you come come to again, unnerving calm permeates the atmosphere of the chamber. The hive tyrant is dead, and besides its carted to an insectoid body lies the pistol of the red ash. Medicaid sensors built into your borrowed narthesium scans his life signs and tell you what you already know that the librarian is beyond saving. The older space marine's eyes flicker open then. Brother neighbor, he says with a smile. I know I knew we can deal with this horror together. He coughs and his eyes half close for a moment. When they open fully again, for the last time, as it turns out, you see the pupils of his eyes crack crackling with the last blue-white vestige of psychic power. 
Beware the sleeping God, he says. His voice barely more than will whisper, his words no longer his own. Beware the harbinger of woe, and when the dead dies, look to the west, and then he is gone. A split second after, a split second later, you feel the first paramecium tremors pass through the biosip. It would have been seen that the rather was psychic attack on the hive tire and has fed back into the hive mind, and thereby the hive ship too. Instinct and years of battlefield experience, all theaters of war, or tell you that you should get out as quickly as you can. Turn tail and flee immediately. Recover Epistola Radamus war gear first. Okay. Radamus arms are potent relics of the chamber and their loss could come at incalculable loss to their Imperial Fist Future. You may take both Librarian Storm Shield and his Force Hammer. All two in the right in the hands of the non psyker it will act simply as a Thunder Hammer. Without any prior warning, another parent shudders passes through the bios so powerful that it throws you off your feet. Okay, examine the Thunder Hammer. Yes, I will take the Thunder Hammer. Yes, take the Thunder Hammer. I will take the Storm Shield. Storm Shield, plus one darkness, minus one armor. Take the Storm Shield. Attempt to recover Librarian Radom's gene seed before not going anywhere. Breaking the seals of Radom's armor, you open it up to explode, expose his cooling body sealed within. But do you know how to activate Brother Orders' reductor? Enter the clandestine code. You enter the code with the grinding girl of the drill with clamping extrudes from the end of the Medikai tool. Recovering both Radamus's progenor glands, you deposit the crazy cust like crows in their own cryogenic stage chamber inside of the oldest narcissum. You came to appear there. As the hard mind seems to be awakening, it is imperative that you no longer linger here any longer than you need to get out of this stinking ship. Uh. Did you encounter a Lictor on your journey through the dormant hive ship? Well, no, I haven't just encountered this creature. Another rippling convulsion passes through the beast and you wonder what could possibly come in next. next. Wheels of Fate. Fist. Fist. Ah, three fists. The rumbling passes. Retracing the route you took through the bioship, your eidetic memory implants enabling you to remember every twist and turn of the superorganism labyrinth intestines. You soon find yourself at the rent in the creature's side by which you first enter its body. You cast a prayer thanks to the Emperor and your Primarch watching over you whilst you were inside the hive ship. Get clear of the stinking viscera of the alien monstrosity. You feel weary and wonder what has become of the rest of the squad, squad Scipio. Rest for a moment. You decide. You decided to waste no further time and continue your search. Further explore the Herald of Oblivion. Okay, I think we will continue from here later. Hopefully you have guys enjoyed this so far. We'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya.